Sharks have two different ways of hearing. They have an inner ear on the top of their head, but then they also have a lateral line which goes along their entire body and makes their body act as an antenna. So they can sense sound with their whole body. These guys are going to be some of the most sensitive aquatic animals that you're going to see in a zoo or aquarium. The wavelengths and frequencies that these animals are really evolved to hear are totally different from us. We were working with the team from BYU's Acoustics Lab to get a really good look, a deep dive, if you will, into what sound is doing and how that sound is behaving in the habitat. If it's 60 dB in the viewing room, what's the sound level in the tank? Or what frequencies are being transferred into the tank? Now they were really interested in making sure that while they're providing a great opportunity for the public, they're also um, protecting the animals. Getting a really good look at sort of the spectrum of sound, not just the volume, will be really helpful for us. We had to figure out what equipment to use, what hydrophone setup we would use. We spent a lot of time creating the rigs for the hydrophones. We had to set up in both the room and the tank. So that involved setting up speakers to play sound, as well as microphones and sound level meters in the room, okay. as well as hydrophones distributed throughout the tank, recording sound in the water. I was told by one of the workers that they feed the sharks in a similar manner, like on the end of a long pole. And so we had to like put them in slowly and be like, there's not food on the end of this pole. Please don't eat it. The sharks especially were getting more and more curious. They would definitely bump the hydrophones. The turtles in the tank are all rescue turtles who have buoyancy issues. And so I cannot really blame them about hitting the hydrophones. <laughs> He's coming to say hello to you. So that was kind of fun. Sharks are most sensitive to frequencies from about 100 hertz to 1500 hertz. Sounds that we played in the rooms were chirps that see how well that would be transmitted through the acrylic. The interesting thing we found was only a small amount of the sound from the room is actually being transmitted. All of the rest of it is either being stopped by the acrylic or just dying out really fast in the water and is below that noise level that's being generated by the life support system. So they're currently building a new tank and they've already taken into account how acoustics will affect the tank, which is super cool to see. Understanding sort of what the background is will give us some more insight as we move forward in development of the new system. You can use sound to have an impact on animals, no question. Being able to sort of combine forces to uh, both get a whole new level of kind of scientific investigation into what we're dealing with in one of our habitats and then also make that an educational experience for the students that are participating is really the whole point.